Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rainy City Mayor Val Vandenberg, and I'll call the April 25th, 2022 regular council meeting to order and begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is on the traditional and ceded territory of the Cape Sea Quantlin, Masqui, and Semiamu First Nations. For any members of the public who are in attendance to watch these proceedings, welcome. And just a reminder to keep your mics and your cameras turned off while you are in, in attendance today. Members of council, tonight we have uh, Councillor Paul Albrecht, Councillor Terry James, Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Nathan Bahal, uh, Councillor Rudy Sturdeboom, and Councillor Rosemary Wallace. And for staff, our Chief Administrative Officer, Francis Chung, Darren Lane, Director of Corporate Services, Carl Johansson, our Director of Development Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment, Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture <laughs> and Community Services, and Kelly Kenny, our Corporate Officer. Um, before I, we consider adoption of the agenda, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? <clears throat> Seeing none, motion that the April 25th, 2022 agenda be adopted as circulated. Any other members? Councillor Albert, Councillor Sturdeboom, all those in favor? Opposed? Not curious. Okay, um, we have a number of sets of minutes. Um, if there's no objection, I'll read them out in one motion. <clears throat> that the minutes of the following meetings be adopted as circulated. Regular meeting held on April 4th, 2022. Public hearing held on April 4th, 2022. Special pre-closed meetings held on March 28th and March 30th, 2022. Are there any corrections, errors, or omissions to be fixed? Seeing none, I need a member and a seconder, please. Councilor Sturdivant, Council Albrecht, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Hey, on to delegations. We have Cheryl Barron from the New West District, or New West and District Labor Council. Sorry about that. Um, here to talk about the day of morning on April 28th, 2022. Okay, it's not going to be Cheryl. It's actually Wendy Cook, who's oh, the guy. Uh, yes. Welcome. <laughs> That's no problem. It, it, Cheryl's the um, is our uh, office administrator. She arranges everything. So uh, well, she's so, here to present today. So <laughs> yeah. So I'm here. Yeah, she's very busy. So <laughs> here goes. I um, I'll just talk about um, the. Uh, Day of mourning for workers killed and injured on the job, and and um, so I'll I'll go through what Janet gave me to talk about, and then if you have any questions at the end, I'll go fast because I know it's she gave me a lot. So here goes. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Wendy Cook, and I'm a delegate of the New West District Labor Council and a member of the Langley Teachers Association, the BCTF Union. Um, each year, the New West District uh, at Labor Council presents to 14 city councils and seven school boards within our region to seek their support and recognition of April 28th as the day of mourning for workers killed and injured on the job. Our presentations are designed to be informative and with a theme or focus, we believe workplace health and safety is everyone's responsibility. But in the last few years, our presentations have changed. Most notably, this year marks our third day of mourning since the start of COVID pandemic. In the past, many thought of safety in the workplace as only involving machinery, vehicles, or maybe chemicals. And the focus including steel, you know, toe boots, eye, ear, breathing, and fall protections. The labor movement made hard fought gains on improvements to legislation, like the very important West Ray amendments to the Criminal Code of Canada, and to ensure workers had appropriate coverage and compensation uh, under WorkSafe BC. Both of these are critical uh, to ensure workers continue to be safe at work and to provide uh, redress in case of negligence on the parts of employees and supervisor, supervisors. 
When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, we were not able to make these presentations to you in person uh, or sometimes even via Zoom. And last year, our focus though via Zoom was on sharing and emphasizing the importance of pandemic precautions that were keeping frontline workers safe like masks, hand washing, physical distancing and vaccinations. And in the media and in our communities, we also saw widespread understanding of what workers have also known. Good health is not just physical, it is mental and emotional. Safety is not about tools and gear, it is about attitudes, awareness, workplace culture, sharing responsibilities and commitment. This day of mourning, we are here to take this opportunity to reinforce these understandings so we don't fall uh, out of the headlines as the pandemic passes and life returns to the new normal. We are here to say going forward, normal cannot include preventable injuries and death at work. Our purpose in recognizing the day of mourning has always been twofold to remember workers killed and injured on the job and to rededicate ourselves to preventing future injuries through education. And this year we are adding a third priority that speaks to this new widespread understanding of health and safety and which echoes the campaign of the Canadian Labour Congress, work shouldn't hurt. Three years ago, the ILO agreed it would recognize occupational health and safety as a fundamental right at work, but this was never implemented. And in the time since the pandemic has exposed the lack of protection for workers and around 8.1 million people worldwide have died as a result of their work. And many more now live with life altering injuries and illnesses. Working people can't wait. We know workplace deaths are preventable deaths and that behind these stats are members of our communities. They are our family, our friends and our neighbors. The campaign Work Shouldn't Hurt calls on the Canadian government to take a leadership role internationally to get the ILO Convention on Workplace Safety as a Fundamental Right passed this year. Why does this matter? During the pandemic, we saw workers having to fight for access to protective equipment, for COVID safe practices at work, for paid sick leave and for respect for their right to be healthy and safe at work. It is our hope that by making safety at work a fundamental right, workers will not be burdened by these fights in the future. Throughout the pandemic, workers in every industry and sector of the economy prove that they were willing and able to respond to keep our communities safe, keep them supplied, keep them going, to do what was necessary to, necessary to get to where we are now. We don't think that recognizing workers should be safe at work and protected from preventable injuries and death is too much to ask in return. There can be no economic argument that stands against the lives and the health of working people and the impacts on their families. As working people, we view the right to be safe at work as an important freedom of association and the elimination of forced labor, child labor, and discrimination in employment. We ask for your support. Uh, we want to call senior levels of government to lead on making the right to a safe workplace the standard, both here and around the world. Everyone here today can help make a difference. As elected local leaders, you join us in calling on employers in our community to take responsibility for assessing and eradicating hazards in their workplaces and in their supply chains. Workers stand ready to participate in prevention through workplace safe health and safety committees. Together, we can and should lead the way for workers and their families. It is leadership that is key when it comes to health and safety in the workplace. Strong leadership can show the way, set the example, and ensure we're all working together. This is especially important for younger workers who are higher, at higher risk of injury in the workplace as they are often unaware of their rights, like the right to refuse unsafe work 
and may not feel able to speak up when they have concerns and question. Your awareness and, and education are keys to ensure safer, healthier workplaces. I'm gonna end here by inviting you to join the Labour Council this day of mourning for workers killed and, and injured on the job for an in-person observance on Thursday, April 28th at 11 a.m. In, West, in Westminster Pier Park in New Westminster. And links to the event are on the Labour Council website and Facebook pages. I will admit, I will not be able to make it there this Thursday, which is why I'm doing two presentations today instead. But if you guys are able to make it, it would be wonderful um, to see you there. Everyone can make a difference, uh, be safety conscious, support accountability measures and health and safety education in the workplace. And when I taught, it was the young workers who didn't know their rights and we do have to ensure they know those rights as well. Um, and thank you very much. And presented by New West District Labor Council, not Cheryl, but Wendy Cook. Um, and I am the BCTF um, rep on the New West District Labor Council Executive. Well, thank you. thank you very much, Mrs. Cook. And yes, um, we observe the day uh, every year. So Thursday, we will have a ceremony and um, minute of remembrance for those that have lost their lives and been injured. And um, it's important. It's very, very important. And uh, I like to hear about the youth because you're right. We forget about them and we assume that they know what we know and it is our job to help them out. So uh, thank you for that reminder. Um, and please say hi to Janet for me before I forget. So yes. I haven't seen her in a while. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I have a few comments. We will start with Councillor Sturdebo. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I was going to advise uh, Wendy, uh, of course, with uh, gratitude. Uh, good to see you. And uh, okay. I'll let you know that, yes, we, we are having a ceremony of our own here. And if you're in the neighborhood, you're welcome to attend at the flagpole at 11 o'clock. Okay. And I want to thank you for commemorating this day. Uh, whether you're with us or not, and bringing it to everyone's attention because it's really important, especially at this time of COVID, our learning to be careful for ourselves and each other. Um, so uh, thank you very much. And I'll be attending at the flight pool. Maybe we'll see you there. Yeah, thank you, thank Madam you. Mayor. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Albrecht. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, Wendy, and welcome to uh, our, our meeting here in Langley City. Um, I just want to express my appreciation to the uh, New Western District Labor Council for all you do for workers. Uh, it's very much appreciated, and uh, I know myself, uh, I'll be standing with our workers here at uh, Langley City. I also work at the Township of Langley and have uh, attended many of their meetings as well as spoke at many of those uh, uh, um, recognition events. Uh, it's kind of a sad day that we have to uh, remind people that uh, no injury is acceptable at any workplace under any circumstances because typically they are all preventable. So an injury to one is an injury to all and I believe that wholeheartedly. So we'll continue to send the message and make sure that uh, our work environment and any that we have any influence over will remain safe for all workers. And thank you again. Thank you. Mr. Paul. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and through the mayor to, to Ms. Cook. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. And, you know, uh, I started my, uh, my first real job was Safeway, so that was UFCW. Uh, and, you know, they really had a culture of safety there. And I think it's because of the work, uh, it's not, think it was because of the work of UFCW uh, that really instilled that into our workplace. At the time, it was really focused on PPE, and I think we've learned a lot over the years. Um, I was the, actually the employee chair of the co, like the Joint Health and Safety Committee with Rogers for our, our facility. So um, working, it was CEP and then Unifor. Um, but uh, it, it was, we saw, I saw that evolution of, you know, it's not PPE. If you're actually getting to that point, we probably failed on our, our safety plans, right? Because you're trying to do prevention and even more importantly, identify like near misses in the worst workplace, right? So, and then starting to add that component. And I was just talking about someone the other day with this of, you know, mental health is a huge part of safety. 
And, you know, when we look at this event, we should be looking, like you said, about, you know, how we create that culture of safety in our workplaces, how we do that in the city, because, you know, it's that that prevents those near misses, how we identify those near misses so that we can ensure, you know, that people are safe and we learn from them. I think that was the most important thing I learned was like near misses are so important and to document them and to learn. Uh, so that's something that I, I care about. You know, I did that in my former job. Uh, and yeah, I'm just so happy that we're looking beyond even the physical and now into people's mental well-being. So yeah, it's so important that we recognize this day and consider those people who've lost their lives um, just due to an unplaced, unsafe work environment. And even recognize that there's people who, you know, have had their mental health degraded because of an unsafe work environment as well. And while they may not, you know, have passed away, we still should acknowledge that the, the drain um, that an unsafe work environment could have on them and their family. So thank you so much for bringing this forward. Okay, I don't see anyone else. So thank you very much, Ms. Cook. And all right. Okay, on to Mayor's report. The next upcoming regular council meeting is May 9th, 2022. And the following regular council meeting after that will be May 30th, 2022. And first up, we have a recreation update with Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you see my uh, slide presentation? Yes. Thank you. So this is a little bit longer one. This is our getting into our real active season here. So for April of 2022, an update. First, I'm happy to say our 60th annual Langley Walk is this Sunday. 60 years, the city and the township have been working together to provide this Langley Walk. This year, because it was a, a, a big one, a, an O, a 60, uh, it's being uh, held out of McLeod Athletic Park. So the walk will walk, will go through both the city and the township. It's a 5K walk and you can do it once or you can do it twice. We will see, you can see the crest, what it looks like here on the screen. You can collect one of those when you get through the uh, uh, finish line, if you will. And just a reminder that registration does open at 1230. The walk starts at 1. And there are several um, plaques awarded for various categories. So oldest walker, most walkers from an elementary school, a middle school, a secondary school, most walkers from a business organization, and family and finally, uh, the family with the most walkers. So for more information, you can look up langleycity.ca and under our special events, and you'll see the Langley Walk. But it is this Sunday, May the 1st, rain or shine, starting at 1 o'clock. Hope to see you there. And we have, uh, in Langley City now, we are doing light up the city out of our spirit stage. We have lights on our uh, cover there. And so for May 1st, we're recognizing cystic fibrosis. And the colors you'll see for awareness are blue and green on the community stage there. And it's really just to um, make people more aware, help to raise funds to help a cure or control cystic fibrosis. Uh, we have our youth week coming up and we have a call out to young artists, so grades six to 12. I did mention this last time but art can still be submitted up to and including May the 3rd. So if you're interested in submitting your art, please contact our youth programmer, Taryn. Uh, you can do so by email. And that email is youth at langleycity.ca. Or you can phone Taryn at 604-514-2999. We are excited to be able to have a Youth Week Art Gallery, and that'll be held on Thursday, May the 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. Last year, it was phenomenal. We had so much artwork. It was just totally amazing. So if you're interested, please phone and submit your artwork so we can show it um, on the 5th of May. A program that now is a new program, relatively new, is called WalkFit. It runs on Mondays from 3.15 to 4.15. We're using multi-purpose room three, but we're also using our uh, walking track. So um, it's a regular fitness program. You can, uh, it's a drop-in program, but you do need to pre-register in advance. For more information, you can phone 604-514-2940. So that's here at Tim's Community Center. 
Our second Light Up the City present uh, promotion here is uh, May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month. And uh, so on May 3rd, you'll see the Spirit Square lit up in green. And again, this is to make people more aware of uh, uh, Lyme awareness and the, that disease. Okay, so as I mentioned, we had the call to artists for Youth Week. So this is the, the activities that are happening for Youth Week, which is May 1st through the 7th. Uh, we have a cane ball, try it today uh, on May the 3rd from 4 to 6 p.m. here at uh, Tim's Community Center. Then we followed by Foods of Langley. So there's really kind of a multicultural theme to this uh, Youth Week this year. The Art Gallery on May the 5th, a movie night May 6th, and we're going to wrap up the week with a Youth Week Festival, promising to be a lot of fun. And this, uh, people can, the youth can, for grades 6 to 12, are welcome to drop in. It is a free event all week long, so we're happy to welcome the youth into our uh, community and into our community center. Help to celebrate the great things that they do. Exciting stuff. Langley City is working closely with the Langley Arts Council and Opus Art Supplies. And we'll be holding our first Art in the Park uh, at Ryan Lagoon on uh, May the 7th at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You need to bring your own stuff, but you can walk around and see other artists for this plein air painting. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. We get a lot of response for this. It's been very popular in the past, and we're happy to be supporting this with the Langley Arts Council. So that's on May 7th at Bryden Lagoon, 10 a.m. And it's such an exciting year with everything coming back. Once again, after a two-year hiatus, we have our tri triathlon on Sunday, June the 12th. You can swim, bike, and run your way through Langley City. Uh, you can do it individually, or you can sign up as a team. And if you register by May 4th, you actually get a discounted rate and a free race t-shirt. This race is open to everyone five years and older. And it's a fun way for first timers to try the sport of triathlon. So that's Try It Triathlon June the 12th. For more information, you can phone 514-2940, 604-514-2940. Uh, community day, yes, it's coming back to you. So we're busy, busy organizing these exciting events. So Saturday, June the 18th, this is Save the Date. Uh, it's at Douglas Park again from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're busy planning um, uh, entertainment, kids and youth activities. We have that outdoor hockey arena coming back again and pickleball demonstrations, lots of art, food trucks, community booths, and more. So please, this is a free, fun family event, and uh, we're just keeping our fingers crossed that the weather will be great for it. So we're back and we're gonna have fun. So community day on June 18th at Douglas Park, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Get Up and Go, we're offering another Get Up and Go program. It's running May 16th through to June 20th and that's on Mondays from nine to 10 a.m. If you're interested, you can phone 604-514-2940 to register. Most of these uh, activities for this program are based in or around chairs. So it's giving you added support if you need it and to, to build up some of the, that strength uh, and around some of the mobility impairments people uh, do experience. So that's get up and go. And again, our live our live live one 5210 play boxes are uh, up and running again. They're restocked. The, the locations of them are Douglas, Linwood, Bryden, Penzer, and City Park. They're full of great sports equipment. All you need to do is phone uh, Tim's Community Center at 604-514-2940. You'll get the code, and the code does change from time to time, but you'll get the code, and then you can access these boxes and all the great equipment. So, you know, you can have try new things like pickleball, you can do soccer, or frisbees, or hula hoops, whatever. There's lots of stuff in there, and it's a fun way to be active, and, and uh, it's there's no cost to it. So... Again, you can phone 604-514-2940. Healthy living bags, we're ongoing. The price has moved up a dollar just because of the inflation costs. Uh, but our next bag is May 3rd. So you have time still to sign up for May 3rd. 
and the following date is May, uh, June the 7th, sorry. It's the first Tuesday of every month. Pickup is here at Tim's Community Center, or if you live in Langley City and you're shut in, you can, uh, we can arrange for it to be delivered to you as well. So for more information, you can phone 604-514-2940. And our gymnasium sports, just a reminder that we serve up a variety of uh, programs in our gymnasium, table tennis, pickleball, basketball, volleyball, badminton. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can register up to seven days in advance. And you can phone 604-514-2940 to make that reservation. Roaming Rascals, I think it's almost every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have Roaming Rascals. Those kids can get their little uh, energy bunnies out of them, climbing through uh, tunnels and on equipment, jumping, bouncing. Uh, we have it both at Tim's Community Center or Douglas Recreation Center. It's $5.50 per child. And you can register online at langleycity.ca or phone 604-514-2940. And this is my last slide. I let, let save this for the last because Al Anderson Pool is opening up on Friday, May the 13th for another season and we're almost back to normal. What do I mean by that? Drop in um, public swims, lake swims. You can register for your swimming lessons, full capacity. Parents are not required to uh, be in the water with the children unless it's a preschool little tots program. Uh, we are still doing the pre-registration for aquafit classes just because we do tend to fill those up. Uh, so get ready, put your bathing suit on, jump in the pool on Friday, May 13th for that first length swim in the morning. And that's my presentation, Madam Mayor, for April. We look forward to the one coming up in May. Great, thank you very much, Ms. Selton. That's great. So much, kind of getting back to normal, right? Which is we a good sure thing. Are. I think we're all happy about that. So I know you got a lot of work ahead of you this summer. So kudos to you and your staff. I know you, you're going to be super busy, but you're going to enjoy it because you haven't done it for so long. And it's super exciting with Community Day and everything coming back. So it is. thank you for that. Okay, uh, Councillor Wallace, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my compliments to your report uh, for uh, a city as, as uh, I'm going to say as small as we are, um, there is a lot of things going on. So, um, yeah, thank you uh, for your report. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay, moving on, we have uh, Councillor Albrecht, Discover Langley City Report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, the report is in your council package, so I'm not going to go into details on the stats, but I just wanted to touch base on a couple items. One was our uh, our uh, local MP, John Aldag, arranged for a meeting with the uh, Minister for Rural and Economic Development, uh, Goody Hutchings, and uh, they were uh, uh, talking about the regional tourism plan and uh, the, the feasibility of getting something like that on the go. So I think that was a very favorable meeting that was uh, well received by all parties. Um, the hotel feasibility and market feasibility study, uh, the Fraser Valley Destination Management Group, uh, a function of Destination BC's Vancouver Coast and Mountains region, was able to secure funding in the amount of $75,000 from the Destination Council Seed Fund. Uh, this funding is being used uh, for a hotel feasibility, market feasibility study that was identified as a need for each of the communities within the group. Once the study is complete and opportunities are identified, uh, the hope is that we work with our economic development officers to move forward on the recommendations. And finally, the MRDT renewal uh, has been uh, submitted uh, to the province and Ministry of Finance for cabinet approval. Uh, there may be some questions with the application, uh, but we expect it to go through uh, without a hitch. Uh, once it's approved by cabinet, notification will be sent directly by the ministry to the city as the designated recipient. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave all the stats and the marketing uh, aspects uh, for you to read at your leisure. And that's my report for tonight. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. A lot of great work going on there. Any comments? Seeing none. Okay, we will move on to bylaws. Thank you for that. 
All right, first bylaw, bylaw 3215-2022 tax rate bylaw. First, second, and third reading of a bylaw to levy property value taxes for municipal purposes for the year of 2022. And Mr. Light, I believe you would like to introduce the bylaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor, um, members of council. Uh, this is our tax rate bylaw for this year. Um, so it, as you will recall, we have our financial plan bylaw that was adopted by council in March. Then we get the uh, property tax assessment information from the BC Assessment Authority at the beginning of April. And hence, we're bringing forward your, the uh, tax rate bylaw today for your consideration. Um, and it matches what was approved in the budget bylaw or the financial plan bylaw back in March. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Okay, motion is that the bylaw cited as the 2022 tax rates bylaw 2022 number 3215 be read a first, second, and third time. We need a mover and a seconder, please. Councilor Albrecht, Councilor Sturdeboom, and Councilor Sturdeboom, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you to uh, uh, Mr. Light, uh, this is more or less just a, a housekeeping matter. The uh, financial plan has been approved. It's just a matter of matching it up to the assessment authority's valuations. Am I correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you very much, and thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, any other questions or comments? Call the vote. All those in favor and opposed? And that carries. Okay, on to bylaw 3217, 2022 to 2026. Financial plan amendment bylaw, first, second, and third reading of a bylaw to amend the 2022 to 2026 financial plan. Mr. Light, I believe you would like to speak again. Please go ahead. Thank you, Ma Thank you Madam Mayor, uh, members of council. So this uh, amendment is really reflecting um, the first six items on this amendment are relating to what the city has received or has um, applied for uh, through either provincial governments or TransLink. Um, and I think that's, yeah, UBCM. Um, so we've been awarded some grants. So we wanna reflect that in our financial plan in order to uh, accommodate the work that we want to do with those funds that were being received. And then there's a few other smaller items that um, towards the end of the bylaw, the other seven items uh, relate to projects that we have either have come back in the tender higher than we anticipated or just additional work that we want to accomplish in those projects. Thank you so much. Great, well, thank you for that clarification. Motion is that the bylaw cited as the financial plan 2022 to 2026 bylaw 2022 number 3194 amendment number one bylaw 3217 be read a first, second and third time. I need a mover and a seconder please. Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Hall, any further discussion? Call the vote, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Okay, on to bylaw 3205, zoning bylaw amendment number 187, and development permit number 1421. Third reading of a bylaw to rezone the prop properties located at 5494 to 5508 Brighton Crescent and 198905 55A Avenue from RS1 single family residential zone to the CD83 Comprehensive Development Zone to accommodate a six-story 92-unit apartment development. Motion is that the bylaw cited as the Zoning Bylaw 1996, number 2100, amendment number 187, 2022, number 3205, be read a third time. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Pahal, any discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Bylaw 3165, zoning and bylaw amendment number 174, and development permit number 0820. Final reading of a bylaw to rezone the property located at 5609201A Street to accommodate a five story, 62 unit apartment development that the bylaw cited as zoning bylaw 1996, number 2100, amendment number 174, 2021, number 3165, we read a final time. Uh, Councillor Bahal and Councillor Sturdeboom, any discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? And that carries. Development permit number 0820 approval. And I believe Mr. Johansson, you wish to provide some comments. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just wanted to make council aware that uh, the applicant had uh, proposed a, a minor update to the outdoor amenity area. Uh, but uh, noting that uh, when we took a closer look at it, uh, it's proposing synthetic grass for a bocce ball court. Uh, so staff uh, will work with the applicant to look at a natural grass alternative or revert back to uh, the original uh, paver stone treatment uh, as was proposed in the public. So staff recommend approval of the DP knowing that the amenity area in question will be updated as I described or revert back to what was shown in the public hearing. Thank you. Great, thank you very much for that update. Okay, motion forward is that development permit application number 0820 for a five-story 62-unit apartment development at 5609 201 A Street be approved. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Stortaboom, Councillor James, any further discussion on that? See none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Okay, on to committee reports. Crime Prevention Committee 2022 Annual Work Plan. And I believe Councillor Pahal is chair of the Crime Prevention Committee. He would like to introduce the motion. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And to the Mayor, I will just read that Council approved the Crime Prevention Committee 2022 Annual Work Plan. Get a second seconder. to that, <laughs> Councillor uh, Sturdivant. Okay, uh, any discussion or questions for Councillor Pahal? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. All right, Environmental Sustainability Committee 2022 Annual Work Plan and Councillor Wallace is chair of the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Would you like to introduce the motion, please? Um, actually, I don't have it in front of me. I'll, I'll, re I'll get uh, Councillor Albrecht if he has it in front of him to read it, sorry. That's fine. I do, and I'd be happy to, um, on behalf of the committee that council approve the Environmental Sustainability Committee's 2022 work plan as follows. Plan and imp implement annual Earth Day event. Uh, review single use product bans for possible city bylaw. Uh, discuss and develop environmental recognition program for individuals and businesses. Educational sustainability messaging. Uh, that is to develop a poster campaign for environmental sustainability, such as single use plastics, dog waste, and uh, 2022 as the year of the garden. And finally, research and discuss tree prevention idea, preservation ideas with the goal towards supporting the city to move towards tree protection and managing its urban forest. And I move, so move. And Councillor Wallace can second that. Perfect. Uh, Councillor Martin, go ahead. Thank you. Um, in regards to uh, the <clears throat> implementation or, or looking at single use product bans. Um, I see it says, you know, um, they're going to look for individuals and businesses, but how, how much consulting will be done with the businesses? Councillor Wallace. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, I think we're going to, we're going to approach it on an educational um, basis first and then move from there. So um, that, that is our focus. And so it's not to implement anything right away. It's to see where everybody is and to help people get on board with um, other materials that they can use. So you're basically going to just promote it and hope that people follow along. Is that the idea? I mean, eventually we'll probably, there'll, there'll be a, a motion put forward, but for now, I think it's just a, it's, it's an education and working with the businesses um, in regards to their, their waste. Councillor Albrecht probably has something more. I think the province is looking at banning all plastics anyway. So Councillor Albrecht, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for letting me uh, jump in here. I know there's a number of businesses that are already recognizing uh, that uh, the ban on plastics is coming. It's an eventuality. So they were already changing their business model. Uh, but uh, I was actually talking with uh, members of the business association 
about maybe getting an inventory of uh, who's doing what and trying to figure out where we are um, as a community and maybe uh, adding an educational piece and, and trying to come up with uh, some ideas and strategies. We know that it's not something that we can just implement overnight. It changes business plan substantially. So we want to be sensitive to that. Uh, but we also need to recognize that this needs to change in, in all our communities and in the province. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's a good approach. I mean, like you said, it certainly would change a lot of business plans. And, you know, given all the, the businesses we have in our community, I think we have to be very aware that they've just gone through a tough couple of years uh, financially and to put any other financial burden on them to certainly implement anything right now I think would be would be very uh make people very unhappy so I'm glad that's the approach you're taking and and hopefully uh people will come on board I mean I think and you said it yourself Councillor Albrecht a lot of businesses are ready are making do with other products other than plastic so um it's it started and it can only get better thank you very much Mr. Sturdivant go ahead Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, let me begin by congratulating Councillor Wallace and Councillor Albrecht for a very successful Earth Day event at Douglas Park yesterday. Uh, it was very enjoyable. Nice to get out. Nice to see some, some real people instead of just images on a screen. Uh, and uh, it was a, a really good mood there. Um, I think it was a very successful event. The weather turned out. So congratulations on that. Um, I, I did want to um, have some kind of um, assurance that moving forward, the environmental sustainability community would um, encourage an ongoing dialogue with uh, one of our biggest employers, if not the biggest employer, CKF. I want to be sure that uh, we're not distancing ourselves from our, uh, our, our residents, our businesses, uh, not just retail, but also in manufacturing. Um, if you could comment, I'd appreciate hearing from you. It's oh, Sir Wallace, go ahead. Thank you to the mayor. Um, yeah, that has come up on our uh, sustainability, environmental sustainability committee. Um, we've talked about that. And uh, um, I think the CKF is aligning their sustainability goals um, with, with um, what they are putting out as far as, uh, you know, styrofoam and, and other things that they use for packaging. So, um, yeah, I think it, it will be an ongoing dialogue, and I know that at the AP um, committee, sorry, I don't know the, the acronym of that committee, but they, they talked about uh, their uh, strategic goals and their environmental goals and sustainability at that meeting, and I believe it was by 2026, they hope to have things in place. Excellent. Okay, that's right, Albert. Yeah, I was just also going to add that... Uh, Part of uh, environmental sustainability is supporting local businesses and reducing that carbon footprint. And if we can um, have, uh, let's say, our business community tap into a, uh, a good business in our community like CKF, and CKF can reciprocate that, uh, that type of uh, packaging and, um, and um, wrapping solutions to our businesses, I think it's the type of thing where everybody comes out as a winner. So, uh, I was at the ADP meeting and I saw the, uh, the ambitious uh, goals that uh, CKF has uh, uh, got on their time schedule to become uh, essentially zero waste. So uh, it's really, really um, uh, ad admirable. And uh, I think it's a, a great sign for the community. And I think that uh, if we can support each other, uh, both businesses and industry, uh, that's a win-win for everybody. So that's the goal that I'd like to see. Hopefully that Excellent. helps. Thank you very much for those assurances. After all, it is a partnership in the future that we're working for together. And that would include everybody, not just cutting somebody out because they didn't see it exactly their way or didn't appreciate the fact that they're producing uh, income and employment. So thank you very much for those assurances. And thank you, Madam Mayor, for hearing me out. Okay, uh, Councillor Wallace. Um, thank you uh, through the mayor. I, I know this wasn't on, on the agenda, but. Uh, 
since Councillor um, Storderboom did mention our Earth Day event, I just wanted to um, put out a thank you to all our environmental partnerships, especially Langley Inve Environmental Part Partnerships in LEPS, our field naturalists, our, our community garden, um, the Nicomechal Enhancement Society, and, and our um, Environmental Sustainability Committee. That was the, the, the whole committee was there and volunteering the entire day. So I just wanted to I wanted to state that because of a lot of what we do on our environmental sustainability committee is a lot to do with education. And I think that we are we are better off in educating people because I think people want to do the right thing, but they need the education um, to do the right thing. So uh, it was a wonderful turnout and I, I just wanted to put out a thanks to everybody that attended and to our, our environmental partnership groups. Thank you. Great, thank you for that. And yeah, education is key to everything, I think. So. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed, and that carries. Okay, uh, meeting format for council meetings, committee, and task group meetings and public hearings. And I believe Ms. Kenny, you'd like to speak to this report. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the purpose of this report is to bring forward a recommendation to allow committees, task groups, and the Board of Variants to decide whether they wish to conduct their meetings electronically or in person. Uh, this is in response to feedback received from some committees that they would like to uh, return to in-person meetings now that many of the public health uh, orders associated with the pandemic have been lifted. Um, there still would be a requirement for the committee members to comply with the city's COVID-19 vaccination policy and any public health orders that may be enacted in the future. Now, uh, back in the fall of 2020, given individuals varying levels of comfort with in-person meetings due to the potential for contracting COVID, council's direction at that time to staff um, was that, and this was at the September 28th, 2020 council meeting, um, that all council meetings, public hearings and committee meetings be conducted fully electronically until such time as we have the capability to um, have combined in-person and electronic participation by both council members and the public. So accordingly, if council wishes to permit committees to conduct their meetings in person, council's previous direction with respect to committees only would need to be rescinded and a new resolution um, passed. Great. Thank you very much for that compliance. So I'll read out the Motion that the following resolution passed at the September 28, 2020 regular council meeting be rescinded, hold committee task group board of variance meetings electronically until such time as the city has implemented technology to permit, to permit combined in-person electronic participation by committee task group members and members of the public. Two, that subject to compliance with the City of Langley COVID-19 vaccination policy and any current public health orders, city committees, task groups, and the Board of Variants be permitted to conduct their meetings ele electronically or in person until such time as the city has implemented technology to permit combined in-person electronic participation by committee, task group, board members, and members of the public. Any mover and seconder, please. Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Albrecht, any further discussion? Councillor Sturdeboom. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, through to Ms. Kenny, just uh, for clarification. So uh, it's my understanding that we'd be rescinding the requirement to meet electronically and uh, providing for each of the committees to make their own decisions with uh, regard to actually meeting in person or not. Is that correct? Yes, uh, through the chair to Councillor Sturdeboom, that is correct. Wonderful. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great. Call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Okay. We received some correspondence. May of Cystic Fibrosis, Fibrosis Awareness Month. Just received for information. Everybody's good with that. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. On to new business. Motion to hold the closed meeting. One. Motion to hold the closed meeting that the council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as the subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. When a personal information about an identifiable individual who holds 
or is being considered for a position as an officer, employee, or agent of the municipality, or another position appointed by the municipality. 1D, the security of the property of the municipality. 1G, litigation or potential litigation affecting the municipality. 1J, information that is prohibited or information that if it were presented in a document could be, would be prohibited from disclosure under section 21 of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. 1K, negotiations and related discussions respecting the pro proposed provision of a municipal service that are at their preliminary stages and that in the view of the council could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they were held in public and to be the consideration of information received and held in, in confidence relating to negotiations between the municipality and a provincial government or the federal government or both, or between a provincial government or the federal government or both and a third party. I'm going to move in a second. Councillor Wallace, Councillor Sturdeboom, all those in favor, any opposed, and that carries. All right, motion that the meeting adjourn. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Wallace, all those in favor, any opposed? Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Okay, we're